Steve, what a difference a week makes. Yeah, it does. Um, it's always fine margins as well, isn't it? But I think the level of the intensity in our performance deserved the, the three points and offer. The 45 minutes was was very special for me. We've we've dominated for the last parts a good team. Rightfully turned, rightfully turned two 0 up, and you're always wary. You've got a big manager like myself next door, Steve Bruce. You know he's going to rattle a few, and, and they'll start with a bit more than they had in the first half. But I have to say, I need to look at the pictures, but I think their goals are full. I think he's all over my fullback. I think it's a fill, but sometimes you don't get these. Um, and then we've had to dig in, work really hard. Um, we've become the counter-attacking side that the whole tried to be in the first half. Um, it should work for us because we don't got a penalty for Lewis Cook's incident. I don't know if we'll ever get one. Um, I think the referee then probably had a big decision to make. Not only is that a penalty, but it's a it's a red card. Um, and then we had to work extremely hard because we've, we're playing against a, an outstanding team. 2 0 up at half time. We, we've talked many times about quality into the box, Dallas's ball in, and Chris Wood does the rest for you. Yeah, I think when you've when you've worked two or three days on, on midfield players driving at people and releasing the, the wide player and strikers getting across the man, um, from a coaching perspective, it, it's great when it works. More importantly, it's great for Chris Wood. You know, he has his, he has his knockers at certain weeks, but you see what the goal meant to the big fella. And yeah, you see what the three points meant to the to the squad afterwards. Stand innovation for Chris as well. He really put himself about a bit and led from the front because it was a change in formation for you today, wasn't it? Well, there was a lot of tweak information. There was a there was more quality to a front player. Let's put it that way. You know, last week Joe Jordan could have led a line. He would have won a header because it was 250 feet in the air and probably 40 yards away from him. But we got it right today. Some of the quality up was good. But I thought Chris was exceptional. I think for me, he's the man of the match for us today. I thought he brought players into the game at every opportunity. I think he was a real threat. And I, I think it'll be one, if not the most difficult days, that a very good central partnership at uh, Hulk City. I know they make the change, but they still have three excellent centre backs. I think they've had a, a tough afternoon. And the formation really got the best out of Lewis Cook and Addy Amy today as well. Yeah, I thought Tom was quite exceptional. I think he's. We just said to him there he possibly needs to work on his fitness level, tongue and cheek. I think he was he was box to box, he was side to side. He gets his reward, of course, with the goal. Um, I think we had them rocking then. You know, Mo hits the bar, and um, he's the, the goalkeeper's beating all hands down. And 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 the worry you have in the game is obviously when they pull it back to two one, you you know that they're going to gamble, they're going to take chances, and you know we we had to see it out. But we were we were strong all over. I think the, I think there's no one player that. They didn't play well today, um, but there's one or two, obviously, for different reasons, for different people on the ground, that will stick out for them. Were you pleased with the way your team saw the game out at the end? Yeah, listen, there's, there's always going to be nervous moments at the whole get the ball, but I think when you're re you're reducing whole city to when you put it in from the halfway line into your box and you want them to shoot from 40 yards, then I think you're doing a, a lot right. I think your goalkeeper looked assured again today, which which gives you a, which gives you a big plus and. Um, you know, if they if they had to have scored a goal, it would have had to be a special goal. I think there was a lot made last week about what happened or didn't happen at half time. I don't think uh, Mr. Chilino had, had too much to moan about half time today, would he? Uh, Mr. Chilino didn't say nothing last week at half time either. But I think I've come, I've come. You know, there's a good man, a good man of football. Brian McDermott said to me, "You woke, wake up most days and you read things that surprise you." Well, I woke up today and there's another one surprised me. So it just simply never happened. And if it did. I'd be getting a taxi home when I wouldn't be there. So I've got too much pride. If I'm going to fail at Leeds United, the previous chairman that I've worked for, good men, and Mr Chilina's a good man for me, because he's let me get on with then I, if I'm going to fail, I need to fail. Not fail by picking somebody else's players or teams and shapes and systems. So, you know, it simply never happened. But but there we go. Someone said it did. But, you know, someone said all oh, the players are up for sale a couple of days before. and uh, So it, it, it don't stop. What happened today? We did read that Sam Byron's turned down a new contract, Steve. Where does that one go? Is that dead now or are you going to try and, and, and get a deal done still? Well, I don't know if it's ever dead. I think I want, I want Sam to have, you know, a week or two where we're, we're not discussing it on a daily basis, where, where Sam gets the, the time to think really, really hard does he want to leave this football club. Um, I'll make it clear if we get to January, me as the head coach, if he don't want to commit his future, then I don't want him around because we, we want players that want to be here. He's not going to just sit in and be a bit part player he's got too much in the locker for that he's a he's a young man who I've got the utmost respect for you know he, he 
comes in every day, he works so hard, he conducts himself in an extremely professional, good manner. I said to you, if he, if he turned up with my daughter in his arm, you, I, I don't like any boys, I've said it, but I, you would accept it because I know how he lives. Um, but he has to want to be here. And I don't care who they are, they have to want to be here. If they don't want to be here, then we don't want him around. But he's a, he's a wee while away from that yet. OK, uh, and finally, just from us, what, please, you, obviously you wanted the result, but the performance and the manner of it after after what's been a disappointing couple of weeks, that must have pleased you as well. Yeah, I think on and off the pitch we were good today, weren't we? You know, I think there's there's always three teams at a football match. There's always the, the opposition, the home team and the and the officials. And I think our supporters were stunning today, I think, to, to hear the decibels. And certainly in the second half, when, when Hull probably had their best spell of pressure and were putting a, a few balls into our box, then the, the ground seemed to... Be united rather than disunited, and it was Leeds United that went to that. So we're home wins in three, Steve. This home hoodoo might just be on its way out. Well, the, the last one we lost, we should have won. You know, you can't have seven or eight good chances and, and lose by their only chance. Uh, but you try and learn from it. And, um, you know, football's a game of emotion, it's a game of relief these days if you win a game. Um, but tonight I go, I go home extremely proud of the people on the pitch and the people off the pitch. Thank you.